me a mic check on the floor, please. Testing, one, two, three, four. Testing, one, two, three. All right. 73. Ready your countdown. Roll the countdown. Ready, open mic, up on one, ready to cue. Open mic, up on one, cue. This is how the cameraman sees things as each show is being taped. It's his job to get each shot in focus before the director puts it on tape. Right now, he's focusing in on a shot of me. I'm going to tell you a story about a little boy named Scott. Scott was a little boy with a problem. He was seven years old and he really liked mathematics. He had no trouble learning basic facts of addition and subtraction, you know, the kind that Oscar talks about. That is, he had no trouble until he saw the numbers seven plus eight equals what? Every time he saw that equation, he thought of a monster in place of the answer. Scott couldn't understand why these two numbers should be so difficult. He knew enough that when he saw 8 plus 7 equals what, the reverse order in his mind, he still imagined that same monster. If the answer to that addition equation had been a monster, Scott would have been right every time. But of course, monster is not the answer to any addition problem. Scott knew it wasn't the answer. He also knew he saw that creature because to him, the problem was so hard, it reminded him of a monster. So each time he would start with eight and then add seven things, one at a time, counting nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Of course, each time he counted, he always got 15. But why, oh why, couldn't he remember it the next time he saw seven plus eight equals what? Scott just didn't understand that some people find things harder to remember than others. Many days and many weeks went by, and Scott went on with his counting every time he saw the monster. Suddenly, one day, he had a brilliant idea. He said to himself, you don't have any trouble with seven plus seven equals 14, so picture that monster's eyes like sevens. Then add one big eye in the middle, and you'll know the answer is one more than 14 or 15. For Scott, this worked just fine. After a while, when he saw the monster in his mind with his eyes, he didn't have to count because now he had also learned to visualize a big hat with the number 15 on the monster's head. Once Scott memorized that 15 as the answer, he could easily supply the missing parts of these two subtraction problems. 15 minus 7 equals what? And 15 minus 8 equals what? Seven plus eight may not be a monster problem to you, but you may have other numbers that you have trouble adding. Maybe you could make up your own little monster picture to help you remember the correct answer without counting until you've learned it. You might end up with a whole gallery of monsters. He multiplies, he adds or subtracts, cause everyone needs number facts. What are those things sticking out of your head? antenna to my computer on the moon and what do you do with it give instant answers to mathematics instant answers all right we'll try one seven plus eight equal how many 15 you did all right on that one eight plus seven equals how many 15 hey you're not doing bad 15 minus seven is how many eight and 15 minus eight is how many seven Hey, your computer works all right. I told you instant answers, that's me. As you learn the parts for each new number family, are you discovering a pattern like that of a teeter-totter? For instance, in the 15 family, once you know seven plus eight equals 15, you could put them on a balance like this. Then if you add one to either side or part, you subtract one from the other side or part. Eight becomes the nine, and seven becomes six. 
since you haven't really changed the number of things you're adding, 6 plus 9 equals 15, just the same as 8 plus 7 equals 15. You can automatically apply what you've learned about equations and come up with the other three equations. 9 plus 6 equals 15. 15 minus 6 equals 9. 15 minus 9 equals 6. If you had only added 1 to one side or part, then you'd have to add 1 to the answer. By doing this, you create a new number family. If 7 plus 8 equals 15, and you add 1 to the side with the 7, what does that make? Did you think 8? Then you'd have 8 plus 8 as the parts, and the answer would have to be 1 more than 15, or 16. Could you look at the teeter-totter idea now and know another pair of numbers that will equal 16 when we add them together? The 8 becomes a 9, and the other 8 becomes a 7. 9 plus 7 equals 16. Let's check what you've learned. Watch these numbers. When the numbers stop, Add the two flashing numbers together in your head. Try to get the answer without counting. After you've had time to think the answer to yourself, it will appear on the screen. If you miss, maybe you can make spinners to practice with in your room. This is the first one. The first part is 7. The second part is 9. 7 plus 9 equals what? Seven plus nine equals sixteen. Let's try another. The first part is nine. The second part is six. Nine plus six equals what? The answer is fifteen. Let's do it one more time. Eight is the first part. Seven is the second part. Eight plus seven equals what? Eight plus seven equals fifteen. This time, listen for the family name and decide what the second number should be to make the equation correct. This is the same as finding the missing part. You might find it easier to do if you subtract the known part from the family name, or the whole. We'll start with the family name 15. Nine is the first part. Nine plus what equals 15? The answer is six. Nine plus six equals 15. Let's use 16 as the whole number this time. The first part is 9. 9 plus what equals 16? Or you could say 16 minus 9 equals what? The answer is 7. 9 plus 7 equals 16. We'll use 16 again as our family name. The first part is 7. 7 plus what number equals 16? Seven plus nine equals 16. This time let's use 15 as the whole number. The first part is 7. 7 plus what number equals 15? It might be easier to think 15 minus 7 equals what number? The other part is 8. 7 plus 8 equals 15. 
15 is again the whole number. The first part is 6. 6 plus what equals 15? Six plus nine equals fifteen. Let's use number sixteen as our whole number. The first part is eight. Eight plus what equals sixteen? You could think sixteen minus eight equals what number? The answer is eight. 8 plus 8 equals 16. He multiplies, he adds or subtracts, because everyone needs number of facts. What are those things sticking out of your head? Antenna to my computer on the moon. And what do you do with it? Give instant answers to mathematics. Instant answers? All right, we'll try one. 7 plus 8 equal how many? 15. You did all right on that one. 8 plus 7 equals how many? 15. Hey, you're not doing bad. 15 minus 7 is how many? 8. And 15 minus 8 is how many? 7. Hey, your computer works all right. I told you instant answers. That's me. Time to strain your brain. Think about the words involved and they'll explain. Don't be puzzled, think it through, because math is for you. Today's task is going to be simple, if you've learned to listen. You're going to set up two teams for a game of tug-of-war. Each team must have the same number of people on it. The only catch is, you may not separate the four groups as they appear here. Group A has six people in it. Group B, seven people. Group C has eight people. Group D has nine people. Which groups will you put together? How many people will there be on each side of the rope? Ready? Strain your brain. Groups B and C will be on one side of the rope, and groups A and D will be on the other side of the rope. There will be 15 people on each team. We'll see you next time. Cut the mic, start the theme, dim the lights to a very low beam. That's all from Studio M today. The cameras and fade away. The preceding program was produced by the Ohio Department of Education at WCET.